All right. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Like I'm not that type of height. Just high in height. I'm just too high, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another night of inspirational connection um TV where we are gonna connect, share, and talk about all the things that inspires, motivates, and builds confidence. So tonight's conversation will set your soul on fire. Like seriously, literally set your soul on fire. Okay. So the topic is, are you fireproof? Facebook's weird. Are you fireproof? Um, because you don't look like what you've been through. So stay tuned, share in the conversation. So thank you so much, guys, for watching ICTV Live. If you don't know who I am and we have never, ever, ever met before, I am Samantha of Inspired by Samantha Math Brand, and it is a lifestyle brand that promotes inspiration, motivation, confidence, and love. So please drop a comment, like, and share this video. Also, for more inspirational and motivational videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss a video. And you'll help support my channel. Okay? Now, let me just take a moment to thank everyone that have already subscribed to my channel. I now have 165 subscribers and I really appreciate all of you. And I think you guys need a round of applause for that. <laughs> Let's throw some confetti in. All right. Now we're going to jump right on into the words of affirmation. Okay. And for some reason, my phone icon is like not to me. Okay. Now, positive words are essential in our daily lives, and using words of affirmation are powerful ways to command positivity in your life. Hi, baby. Hi, Auntie Baby. My niece is on Instagram. I am currently streaming right now on Facebook, YouTube, and IG. So feel free to jump on any platform that you would like and just connect, share, and talk with the um talk with me tonight, okay? So, you know, positive words are essential in your life and you want to use them daily. So tonight's word of affirmation is, and I'm just going to go into the jar and we're going to go ahead and pull one out. And tonight's words of affirmation is, I am loved. I am loved. So you want to look at yourself in the mirror and speak it over your life that I am loved. You want to speak it with power and command it throughout your day. Now, what I love about this jar, this jar is a unique jar, a unique product as well, and that it encourages and builds self-confidence. And that is what you'll get when you use these words of affirmation daily. Now, be sure to stick around to the end of this video for more, for more inspirational and motivational products that is available to you. Okay? 
Now, let's get straight into another segment of Samantha's View. Now, tonight's topic is, are you fireproof, right? One of my favorite quotes, one of my favorite, favorite quotes um, is, get right into that uh, transition for you guys. Is you don't look like you don't look like what you've been through. Walk into your destiny. You don't look like you don't look like what you've been through. So walk um, into your destiny. Now, fireproof means resistance to damage from a fire. I'm gonna ask you a question tonight. Are you fireproof? Are you fireproof? So by the end of this video, you will know if you're fireproof. And if not, I'll give you some tips. I'm going to give you some tips on how to become fireproof or how to fireproof your life. Okay. Now, what I believe is that a good foundation, a good foundation is an absolute necessity if an individual or person wants to be, wants to have a fireproof life. Okay. If you are to have, if you are to be fireproof, you have to fireproof your life, then the one possible way to do this is for you to be connected to the correct source or have connection with the correct source, okay? And I believe that source is the one who created the universe. That's the only source that I know that you can be connected to to be able to have that fireproof life, okay? And that's what I believe. And when you are connected, you'll realize that he's the only one that will never disappoint you. And he's the only one that is faithful to bring you out of whatever situation it is that you're going through. Whatever um, problems you're faced with, he's the only one that I know that is able to bring you out of that. Okay? But I want you to remember that sometimes... God will deliver you from the fire, will deliver you from the circumstances, will deliver you from the situation, but other times he will make you fireproof and take you through the fire. And we're going to talk, we're going to um, talk a little bit about that later. I want you to think about the three Hebrew boys, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says they were thrown into the burning, the burning furnace. They were thrown in, Right? And um, if you read the story, it also says that the fire was so hot that the men that threw them in were burnt and they didn't go in the fire. Right. They were also bound by their clothing. So the clothes that they were wearing, that's what they took to tie them together and bound them and throw them into the fire. We'll talk about that a little bit more um, later on. OK. Now, um, if you have not read the story or know the story of um, the three Hebrew boys, um, okay. So tonight, I'm going to give you four tips on how to become fireproof, and that is going to be my take on it, my view. So I'm going to give you four tips on how to become fireproof. Now, number one, which is a given, right? You want to put on some clothes. Put on some clothes. Please, just that's it. Just put on some clothes. Put on some clothes. And um, in the Bible, it says, um, put on the whole armor of God, right? A lot of you may know that scripture. Put on the whole armor of God that you will be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. Um, it talks about we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, um, against rulers um, in high places. And I always say in low places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. I always say wick, spiritual wickedness in low places as well. So you want to take on the whole armor of God, right? So you'll be able to withstand the evil day. And then it also it goes about saying, um, listing the armor. So you want to... Um, having your loins girded about with truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, your feet trodden with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and um, taking the shield of faith, 
and um, the other one is the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's in like Ephesians 6, um, like verse 11 through 17. You can um, go back and check, um, read, on, read, on, read up a little bit on that. So those, those are the armor of God, right? Loins girt about with truth, breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of peace, um, and the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the Bible. We don't go anywhere without knowing the word, okay? Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was covered. They had that armor. They, were, they had that armor on them. They were covered. The Bible said that they were also bound by their clothing. I um, referred to that earlier. They were bound. They were, they were tied together so that they couldn't move by their clothing, right? So they were covered. So what you want to make sure that you're doing when you are faced with anything, you have to be prepared by wearing the right attire. You're going to a, a black a black tie event. You want you don't you're not going in some jeans and a t-shirt. You're going to put on so that you can dress the part of what the um of what you're going to do. So you're gonna to want to be able to have on the right attire for that situation. So whatever it is that you're going through, the first thing that I want you to understand is that if you want to have, to live a fireproof life, if you want to be fireproof, you can check faith. If you want to be fireproof and live that life, you wanna be able to um, first and foremost have a um have on the right attire you want to wear the right attire okay that is the first thing now number two number two is we don't have the right mindset so number two tip is to get the right mindset put yourself in a place where your mind is set on the things that will allow you to have that fireproof life. Now, God's directive for our lives, you know, is for us to be constantly having that renewal of mind that is not negative or shaken. The Bible talks about having that wavering spirit. You don't want that if you want your mind to be, um, to have a good mindset. Your spirit cannot be wavering. There's a scripture that says, um, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that ye prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's in Romans, right? You want to be um, con not conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. You want to renew your mind, right? So that you approve, right? If your mind is renewed, you approve what it, what it is that is good and acceptable, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, another scripture in Ephesians says, um, Ephesians 4, 23, a few script, free verses in there I'll talk about is, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man, wherefore you wanna put away lying, um, you want to speak every man truth with his neighbor. It also talks about be not angry, sin not, and not allow the sun to go down on your wrath and never give place to the devil. If you think about it, you want to have a good mindset. You can't be walking around here being angry or sinning or telling lies and not speaking truth. To your neighbors you don't you, that's not having a positive mindset it also says let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but only things that is good to the use of edifying so you want to lift up you want to build up you want to be able to encourage one another you don't want to be putting people down you don't want to having corrupt communications when you're causing all chaos and you're you're, you're bringing up rumors and you're talking about things that is going to not edify the body of Christ. It's going to tear us down. It's going to tear the body of Christ down. The end of the scripture says, it will minister grace unto the hearers, meaning the hearers are going to, um, you're going to minister to them in a positive way, not in a negative way. Okay. The scripture continues to say, um, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and um and evil speaking be put away from you. So having a good mindset, you don't want to 
be speaking evil or having malice because with all malice, you don't want to have malice with your neighbors. And then you're saying your mindset is, 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 um, is good. Your mindset is not going to be good. If you are doing that, if you have malice in your heart, okay, you want to be kind one to another. You want to be tenderhearted. You want to be forgiven one another in our church right now. We're talking about, um, the theme for the year is forgiveness, reconciliation, reconciling with your brother and sister when they have done you wrong, or when you have done them wrong, you want to reconcile with them. You want to forgive them for the things that they have done. And then you want to be able to reconcile that differences and forgive them and move on because that's what the Bible says. And if you want to have that fireproof life, what better way, but to reconcile, forgive and have that pure heart, right? Have that pure, pure heart. And you have to remember that you are what you think. You are what you think, so you cannot afford negative thinking and negative thoughts to manifest um, in your, you can't have that manifesting because when it does, you're not going to be able to say, okay, I am fireproof. Like, I'm not going to be worried about anything because I got this. No, you're going to always be worried. You're not going to have that fireproof life because you are, your mind, your mind is negative. You're thinking negative thoughts about yourself, about your neighbors, about your, about your, your enemies, about your thinking negative thoughts. You have malice in your heart. You're lying. You're not forgiving your brothers and your sisters. So therefore you want, your mindset will not, you will not have that mindset. Okay. Now tip number three. So we talked about first, you want to make sure you have the right armor on. Second, you want to make sure that you are, your mind your mind, your mind, they said the, the mind is a terrible, terrible thing to waste, but honestly, the mind is where everything starts. It's all in your mind. Number three, um, tip number three is um, don't be afraid. You don't want to be afraid of the fire. You want to have faith. Okay, you want to have faith. Deuteronomy 3.22 says, um, you shall not fear them for the Lord your God shall fight for you. A lot of times we're in situations and we're, we're, doing, we're dealing with circumstances that are um, challenging or that are hard and we have to deal with other people. And sometimes we are worried about fixing it ourselves and we're fearful and we're like, we can't do it. But if we just let our, just let our request be made known to him and then you leave it with him and let him fight for you, let him fight the battle for you, because of course we know the battle is not ours. And we will not fear. We will not fear. We will have faith. We will not be afraid when the pressures come, when the fires come. We will not be afraid or we will not fear because we know that God is going to fight for us. Another scripture said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. And I will help all thee with my right hand of my righteousness. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Do not allow anything to, to, to make you feel like God is not with you because he said he will uphold you. And ye shall not fear them for the Lord your God shall fight for you. Right? Um, for God had not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Right? Yea, though I walk, and this is my favorite one. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of debt, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Everybody, everybody know that scripture. And we read it, and we say it, and we memorize it, and we know it. But then when we're walking through the problems, we're complaining. We, we can repeat that scripture over and over and over, and we know it. But when we're going through the fire, we forget all about Psalms 23. We forget all about Psalms 23. We don't remember that we read it and we said, though I walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. We don't, we don't, we don't say that. Another scripture said, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And throughout through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And these are the words that God wants us to, 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 to repeat daily, to know daily. There are so many scriptures that can encourage us to not fear, not to worry, not to be afraid, not to be fearful, but just to trust them, to have faith 
that he will do as he said he would. Just knowing that we have someone who is fighting for us and someone that will protect us. So we have no reason to fear. Now, tip number four is to stay connected to the source. And how many times that we are doing everything else, but then we get disconnected. We're doing everything else. We have a little faith, but we're disconnected. We're not connected to him. We're not connected. To stay fireproof, you want to have a connection with your source. You have to remember, God is your only source. I don't know if there's any other source around, but God is my only source. So whatever the situations may be, know that God gave you abundance to fulfill his purpose. Okay? And he, he is only, he's the only source of what it is, was, and will ever be. Okay? You don't want to focus on anyone else when you're in trouble. You want to learn how to look to God, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. I was reading um, a, a book the other day, and um, I was reading and it was saying about a lamp. Um, a lamp without its power, without its power source will die. You can't, if a lamp is not plugged in, you can't get any light. You won't have any light in if the source is not plugged up to that electricity. My pastor preached about that the other day. Um, the while back, you have to be plugged into the source, right? So also we as children of God, without our source, we don't have anything. We have no connection. We can't function if we're not connected, if we're not daily seeking him to be, have that relationship. We will not have the, the, the source that we need to do the things that we need to do, okay? And when we're disconnected from the source, that's when we will have harsh consequences that we have to deal with because now we're not connected and now we're in the middle of the fire and we have lost that disconnection, right? So you cannot have the doubt in spirit about whom your source is. You want to know that God is your only source. You want to know that he is your only source. You want to focus on that source. Focus on him. Because if you look up to anything else or look to anything else beside him, you're likely to end up frustrated, disappointed, or angry. And when the fires of life come, then you will not be able to stand it. So you will not be able to be um, fireproof. So just to... Um, a little bit of recap, you want to make sure that you first are wearing the right armor. You want to make sure that you have the right mindset and that you're not fearful and then you're connected. Strive to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We're going to touch a little bit on that before I close tonight. They were placed in a situation that the only thing they had was their connection with God. They were only connected to God. They weren't connected, connected to anyone else. It was three, three people that was thrown into that fire, but they had a connection with God. And looking at the fire, seeing the fire was blazing, but they had enough faith that preceded what they saw. They had so much faith that it doesn't matter what nobody said or what anybody else say around them. They weren't focused on the people that were around them. They weren't focused on the king. They weren't focused on anybody else. They were focused on God. They were connected to him. So in order for them to be fireproof, for them to go into that fire and come out without a, without a burn, come out without a burn, that's because they faith, they had faith. They were connected. They knew who their source were. They knew who were going to help them. They knew who it was that was going to deliver them out of that situation. So they had Faith and they were connected and they were able to say, listen, 